In this lecture, we're going to be talking about one of the most famous theorems in all of math. Let's imagine that we have part of a level in our game where turrets have been placed on two different levels. And we want to know how far away each one is from our player. So we want to know if those turrets can kill or shoot at our player. Well, from this diagram here, you might instinctively be able to say that this one at the top here is further away. But what's the actual distance and is there a way to indirectly measure this distance along here? Well, let's start adding some labels to our diagram here. Let's say that we know the height of each floor. So we know the distance from here to here. And for now, we'll just call that A. We also happen to know the distance from the bottom turret to the player. And so we'll label this one and call it B. Now, what we're doing here is constructing a right triangle. So this angle here is 90 degrees. So let's finish up our triangle by connecting our two open points like this. And we'll call this line C. Now, this long side of our right triangle has a special name. It's called the hypotenuse, and that's spelt H-Y-P-O-T-E-N-U-S-E. And the hypotenuse is always the longest side of our right triangle, and so it always sits opposite our right angle. So whenever you have your right angle, the line opposite that will be your hypotenuse. The word hypotenuse roughly translates to stretch under. You can kind of think of it as stretching under, or in this case, over our right angle. So now let's give A and B some concrete values, because we said we knew what they were. And what we're going to do is we're going to say that A is three units. So that might be meters or just in this case, undefined units. And we're going to say that B is four units. So now we just need a way to find out what C is. Well, we can work out this side length using the Pythagorean theorem. And Pythagoras tells us that A squared plus B squared is going to equal C squared. So if you've ever seen this before, you might see a diagram like this with our right triangle. And then you'll have the squares coming off each side. Now, we can also rearrange this because we're not interested in C squared. We're interested in C. So we can rearrange this to say that C is going to equal the square root of A squared plus B squared. And now it's just a case of plugging in our different numbers. So we've got C is going to equal the square root of A squared. Well, A squared is 3. So 3 squared is going to be 9 plus b squared, which is 4. Well, 4 squared is going to give us 16. So c is going to equal the square root of 25, which is going to equal 5. So we can say that our c here is going to equal 5. So what we've constructed here is a classic 3, 4, 5 right triangle. We call it a classic because it has a lot of real world applications since the numbers are nice and round. So they're very easy to work with. So that's the real basics of the Pythagorean theorem. But let's try and understand what this a squared plus b squared equals c squared is actually doing. Why does it work the way it does? And we're going to do that by proving it geometrically. First up, let's redraw our right triangle here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and rotate it to make a square. So here we have our constructed square with this hole in the middle. And we're going to label up one of our right triangles with A, B, and C. And because we've rotated this around, we can say that this triangle is A, B, and C. And we can keep going around. So this is B, A, and C, B, A, and C. Now, I think we can all agree that this middle section here, this cutout, is C squared right? Because all of these side lengths are all C. And we want this to equal A squared plus B squared. Well, we can say that this square, if we ignored the cutout, would be A plus B squared. But to make all of this work, we need one extra piece of information. And that's the area of one of these triangles. The area of a right angle triangle is A equals one half AB. And that's because if you think about a rectangle with sides A and B, then the area itself is going to be AB, right? But if you chop that in half to get two right angle triangles, 
then the area of one of those right triangles is going to be half AB. So with that, we want to then take our big square and remove the four triangles. So we can subtract four times one half AB. Now it's just a case of simplifying this equation. So pause the video now and work through that. Okay, welcome back. Hopefully that wasn't too difficult. So we've got C squared is equal to, we'll expand this out first. So A plus B squared is gonna give us A squared plus two AB plus B squared. And then we're gonna subtract four times one half AB is gonna give us two AB. And well, the two AB here is gonna be canceled out by the negative two AB here. And so that leaves us with C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. And there we have it. We've proved the Pythagorean theorem geometrically using this method. Now we've seen some uses for a right scalene triangle. Let's have a look at how useful a right isosceles triangle can be. And we'll give this triangle side lengths of one and one to start with. And I want you to now pause the video, work out the length of the hypotenuse. But while you're doing that, also consider why this might be a very useful triangle to know. Okay, welcome back. So the hypotenuse should have been fairly simple to work out since one squared just equals one. And if we add the two sides together and take the square root, then we end up with the square root of two, which is around 1.41. Now, if you can remember this, it makes it very easy to work out the hypotenuse for any other right isosceles triangle, since all you need to do is multiply one of the side lengths by the square root of two. For instance, if we take our triangle and have side lengths of say 12 instead of one, then the hypotenuse would be 12 times the square root of two or about 16.97. This knowledge can come in particularly handy whenever you're dealing with objects that move on a grid and you want them to move diagonally. Think playing pieces on a game board or even working with pathfinding algorithms. So anyway, that's the Pythagorean theorem and why it's a useful thing to try and remember. Unfortunately though, it doesn't really help us with finding any of these internal angles in our triangle. So we'll start looking at that in the next lecture. Mm -hmm.